this is Stampy, and welcome to a, another behind the scenes video. Today I'm going to be building something for my town, or designing something for my town. Uh, I've been generally doing mini games recently in behind the scenes, just because I think they're a bit more interesting because they change a lot more and they're a lot more mechanical. Uh, whereas things for my town, it's generally just more about what they look like and what the, the block selection is going to, to be. But this one I think is going to be interesting because this one is going to be a bingo hall. So I'm assuming you know what bingo is like. I did a Google search just to see whether bingo is a thing in America, because there's sometimes like I mention things or, you know, even just use particular words that just aren't a thing in America. And uh, the majority of my audience is uh, American. So I try to always at least explain what things are. But bingo seems to be pretty international. So hopefully you know what it is. If you don't, basically, it's a game of chance where numbers are kind of pulled out randomly and you need to the unity to get like a line of them or like fill in like a sheet with them. We don't need to be too exact with details because you know, I'm going to be changing things up and minecrafting and stampifying the, the rules anyways. It doesn't really matter. So yeah, before I start even thinking about what the, the bingo hall is going to, to actually look like, I need to work out how I can do a bingo machine. So the obvious thing is to do like, uh, say like a dropper. Let me go and grab a, uh, a dropper and then say like it had a bunch of different colored wool or just, I don't know, different colored whatever or just any blocks uh, inside of it because this is a great way to, to make something random come out. So this is kind of the, the obvious thing. The problem is, is with bingo, you normally have like loads of numbers. You have like, I don't know, I think like 99 numbers or something, at least like close to 100 numbers. So it's going to be hard to, to replicate that with um with this also i need like everyone to to have like their sheets that they fill in so it could be a case of like they have a wall with item frames in i tend to try to not use too many item frames because it lags the the world but it could be something along the lines of when something comes out if they have it they can fill it in oh these are not item frames these are paintings but yeah you get the idea these could all be in a row and they fill it in here but the thing is not only do i need to <clears throat> make it so that uh, random things come out of like the machine which is setting it off. I also need to make it so that everyone starts off with like a different random selection. It could actually be something with concrete powder where they're like they drop down. Like it could be like a bunch of blocks of concrete powder that are slid along. It's just how to, to get it randomly. So yeah, there's quite a lot of stuff that I need to, to begin with working out. Before I go and try and work them out now, I just want to let you know what the, the problems are and kind of what the, the style is that I'm going to need to go for here. So let me go and have a think about it and then I'll bring you back in once I uh, think I have a bit of an idea of how this is going to work. Okay, I've had a bit of a think. So one of the things that I realized is that so imagine if you have your bingo card, like let's say I laid it out like this, even if I did it five by five, which is how bingo normally is. It doesn't really matter who, um, like what these are, as long as you don't like they're all different. It doesn't matter if they're randomly selected or whether they place them down themselves because you have no idea like what's going to be coming up anyway. So I don't need to worry about randomly selecting kind of what this part's going to be. The only thing is like the way that it's revealed. So I thought it could be kind of things on the floor like this. If like a red one comes out, maybe you could place like a block floating over it because this kind of works quite well because one, the carpet works well for marking the floor. Also, it means when I go to place the block, it places it floating over it, which is good because it stops people from cheating. So I don't think anyone is going to cheat. But let's just say if this was the way the game would actually be played. Let's say if it was just like on the floor rather than a carpet, you placed it on. There's no way to check. If it's like this, then you can always like double check and make sure you have placed the right block over the, the right color. That works quite well. So thumbs up on that regard. I mean, I'm not saying that's how it's going to, to be, but that kind of seems to work fine. So I've, I've kind of started leaning more to using concrete powder than using a dispenser because if we're using a dispenser, then like it's going to fire the block out and then maybe I put it up in an item frame or place it but it means there's going to be like someone actively hosting and doing it all I'd much prefer it to be automated which means you know we can all play basically I want to play bingo and I want to join in and not be the person standing there pressing the button like a lemon and I don't want to tell any of my helpers to do that either so yeah I built this this all of this is is just a bunch of concrete powder then a bunch of um uh pistons oh I've just realized if these get set off it's going to set off a few of them isn't it at the same time oh no Okay, it looks like we can set off individual ones. That's good. What about if that was with a um a repeater? It's just hard doing redstone when they're all, all so close. So basically, what I'm thinking of doing is making it so that... I don't know how this is going to work, but basically when you press a button, it will be randomly dropping one of those 
um, these uh, bits of concrete powder. So I thought maybe it could be like a redstone signal that's looping around or a minecart or something, but some way to make like the redstone pulse going up and down. So when you press it, whichever one it's over, it only fires out that one. But from down here, you would have no idea where the redstone is. Basically, you'll just press a button and you'd have no idea where it is. It would basically just drop down one of them randomly. That's kind of a, a cool way, I think, to, to do like a randomizer. Of course, it's not a true randomizer because there's like the the human element of the person pressing the button but if they can't see the redstone then that doesn't really make any difference so yeah that's kind of the, the problem that i am working on at the, the moment so let me have a bit of a play around doing this uh this redstone and let's see whether this option is actually going to to work because if it does work i think that would be really cool okay this is what i worked out it doesn't work <laughs> But let me just, it kind of explains the, the concept of what I'm trying to do. So I have a minecart, which is going around on a loop here. Uh, every time it goes past one of the detector rails, it pushes down one of the pistons. Uh, one of them isn't linked up because the minecart kept stopping. So ignore that one for now, because that one just won't be being pushed down. But the idea was, is as it gets pushed down, then it would send the signal through. So basically you can send a redstone signal through a block. So while the blocks are down, then you can send the signal. But if this redstone lights up while all of these blocks are up, then it wouldn't make anything happen. So the idea was, is that these gradually get pushed down. You would press a button which would send a signal that would be going to all of them, but it would only drop down the one which is pushed down. So this kind of would and kind of wouldn't work. So the problem is, is if I do it all in a big row like this, is as you can see, there's a bunch of them pushed down at the same time. So ideally, you only want it to push down one. But if I press it now, you'll see that like pretty much <laughs> all of them get okay literally all oh all but one of them got pushed down of course if you do it at different timing you know maybe not all of them would be pushed down but basically it's not really working like this so i could do the same concept but spread them out more but they have to be spread out by quite a lot so basically i need a version of this but just like i need the redstone to not be lit up for as long basically that's the the big problem here is this redstone staying lit up for for too long i wonder if um it was a piston just straight next to a uh, detector rail. Would that make it stay down for not as long? I think it would, but it still just stays down for too long. It's still just way too far. So I think in concept, this works fine, but I just need to find a, a slightly different way to, to do it. But I thought I'd kind of show you this way first, just to show you what I was thinking at the, the time. And hopefully I can now come up with a, a better idea. Right, I've done a lot more playing around and experimenting. I had the idea of doing it so that like kind of switching it around so rather than trying to to make it go really fast i thought if the minecart goes really slow and stays for a while on each one then like at this point only one is lit up and then it would only send out one rather than sending out like a bunch of them uh so i tried doing like a row of them didn't really work i tried doing like one big drop where it goes down really slowly i realized that the problem with this is that it's just too slow where like it kind of works in the way i'd like it to work i mean it'd be really big and annoying which is the downside but it would work we would have just one bit of redstone being lit up at a time the problem is it'd be too easy to predict because say if like that one pushed down a blue block and we knew that green was going to be next you know if i really wanted a green i could wait and kind of press the button but the whole point is it needs to be completely random so even if you couldn't see the mine cart but you knew the order they were going to be dropped in uh, it could give you a big advantage and i was like no that's not the solution it needs to be more random random than that so um yeah i then tried experimenting with having a looping track so basically there'd be a detector rail here as the minecart hits it it would um push the, the block down and then if this got lit up that would then go and push just that block down then it would go and loop around and i was kind of playing around a, a bit of it like that i realized that uh, these pistons were probably in a little bit too close together because these can't be on like a turn the uh the the detector rail so like it's kind of hard to make it loop around here and then go across there because then when we get round to the other side it doesn't really fit in very well so i built this again but spread them out uh, a little bit further and that is this one over here and this one is looking pretty nice i will be honest let's let's go and throw some concrete in i haven't actually tested this with concrete just to see uh just how good it works but it seems to be to be pretty close to, to working perfectly so let's go and pass some of these in and i'll show you exactly how this works so once again it just goes and loops around uh, i've just spread them out a little bit further so it has room and this seems to be just about perfect timing as you can see one goes down and just as that one's going up the other one goes and drops down there's a bit of a delay here as it's got to go and loop back around of course in the actual one it could carry on for longer it could like 
rather than loop back this way, you could go here and then go back straight the, the other way so you wouldn't have that big delay. I mean, all that would happen is if you press the button, like maybe it wouldn't drop any down. It doesn't matter. You just press the button again. <laughs> it's not a big deal. So yeah, this seems to be pretty much perfect timing. So let's give it a go. Let's press the button and see how many end up dropping down. Pressed it and... None drop down. Oh yeah, so guys, I didn't mention. Uh, I added my little thing in here. I did some more experimenting. Cause uh, if I did it with just a button without this um, this uh, this piston, uh, the redstone would stay lit for too long that it could end up pushing down too that way. So this method, if I show you down here, oh this is a good comparison. I was testing here. If I press the button and it's just a trail of redstone, you see how long that light stays on for. See how quickly it goes off. Basically, the redstone goes through the block and then gets pushed up by the redstone, which then cuts off the redstone immediately, which just basically means that that light stays on for hardly any time uh, compared to, to the other one. So uh, that's easy. Oh, it's not even like going at all now. Do I need to pull it back a tiny bit? Sometimes you might need to... Oh, did it, did it, I, think, I think it just like slightly lit up. Then there we go. See just the little tiny flash? <laughs> Maybe I just need to, to pull this repeater back a little bit. Right, let's give this another go. I'm not even going to look at the pistons. Let's see if one drops out at all. Yes, there we go. One drop down. Let's go and give it a, another test and see if one drops down again. All good. We're going to give it a, another go. And there we go. And it does seem to be like, like it's going to be impossible for you to predict which color is going to, to come up like that. I mean, you could maybe a little bit, but pretty much this is going to be uh, rather random. And we could even say that like, you know, you're not allowed if it's your... Actually, I was going to say if it's your go, it doesn't even matter about your go, does it? We're, we 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 could just do it so people are just randomly pressing the button and not even thinking about it. That won't be a problem. So that timing seems to work really nicely. So I have a few different options for what I could do. I could either do this going along a lot longer because I want a lot of colors. Basically, every color I can have would be good. I could even like, I could stack this up. So I could do the same thing again, but higher. So the minecart goes up. But what I'm thinking might be a good way to do this. Let me kind of build like a... A miniature on the the floor so let's say that this purple concrete this is like the main floor this is where all the tables and stuff are going to be or like the areas that you fill in and then we'll have the walls around the the outside like this uh, of course we're going to have a, a gap on one side which is going to be where the door is going to be let's just put in some enormous doors <laughs> for the, the miniature yeah imagine this is like a whole building what i'm building here and then we can like around the the outside do all of like the the redstone and the the pistons which means that like you know, like there's going to be walls all the way around you for where the blocks will fall down. So it's going to be a fun game. I'm like, oh, which one fell down? <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think that could that could work pretty nicely. Um, yeah, because how many will be needed? How many? I think there's 16 colors, and so this is four colors here. This could work. We could have four colors on each side. Oh no, because one side's going to be where the door is. So I guess if we could do, let's say if we pick 15 colors, then we could do five on each side uh, and then just leave out like maybe gray and stuff. So let's just say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have all of them, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh yeah, so we only, we only need to like miss out one color. Is that right? Yeah, I think that should be right. So we can just maybe miss out like one of the grays or, or something. <laughs> we'll be absolutely fine. So it's not going to have to be a crazy, crazy big building. I mean, it's not going to be small if this is going to be all hidden around. The problem is though, is actually, no, I think we could do it going the whole way around and just do it like, and just do it like that with just four on either side because this is could be a little bit higher up. So the doorway could be going underneath it. So I think that would work a lot nicer because then the minecart can be going on a continuous loop around and not need to go back on itself, which will be much harder to predict where it's going to, to be. So I think that could work pretty nicely. So what I think I'll do now is I'll neaten up this redstone. I'm going to try and make it go around a, a corner. And that's going to give me a good idea of how big this building's going to, to be. And then I can kind of start thinking about the, the shape of it and kind of just what it's going to, to start looking like. But I like this as a starting method. I also need to, to think a little bit more about the, the way you're going to, to be filling it in. But I'm glad I got this done because this took me like a really stupidly long time to design considering how simple it kind of ends up being. But yeah, I struggled with this one. <laughs> right then, let's hope that my struggling to, to come up with ideas moment is uh, is over. And uh, yeah, I can go and try and fit all of this in nicely. And we can go and actually start designing this thing. Okay, I've got something that looks a little bit more like an actual building now. I'm pretty sure this isn't going to end up what it's like. Certainly, the materials aren't going to end up like this. But yeah, this all works beautifully. It all works really well. So uh, instead of 
how it was before. If you remember where it looped back on itself, it keeps on going around. I added like a little tiny loop here, basically, so the timing works. You'll see that uh, this one drops down, then as this one's going uh, up, this one drops down, so the timing's basically the, the same. There's a few little slight tiny bits of crossover where it's not perfect, but I think the chances of it being in a game and like two drop or something is really unlikely. And you know what? If that happens, then hey, that just counts as two points. But look at that. That was pretty much perfect. And there's uh, pretty much no chance of none dropping when you press a button now, which is all jolly good. So this is basically as small as I could, like we're using this method, as small as I could make it. So th these basically all drop down and just land on where I've placed these gold blocks for for now. Uh, the button I've done to set it off is just there. And as you can see, it's fine to, to do the, the entrance way going underneath. I think I might make it a bit bigger just because like if you imagine like as if there's walls going up here, I don't like the fact that you're going to see like these columns. So what I think I will do is I'm trying to think if I've got a mini game around here where oh in this version no this is the the same <laughs> this is actually really really similar actually now I think about this uh, but yeah what I think I will do is basically make it so that it gets slid uh like horizontally rather than just going straight down and what I mean by that if I just do a very quick mock up is let's say that the the pistons there let's say that we have a whole bunch of concrete powder going up here like that and then we can have a bit stretching across there like that it will probably only be the one block but this is just demonstrated with a few so basically as you do it it slides across that one drops down and then another one goes down like that so this is basically just like the spare ones and then these are the ones that are going to be slid across that means basically in the wall all you would see is just like i don't know if i can quickly break this and place it there we go basically all you would see is ignore that top bit is basically just that just that single block and then it would go and end up sliding out uh, which means i can kind of make the the entire thing one bigger on every side which actually makes it end up like being like quite a bit bigger because if each wall is one bigger like it kind of ends up being almost like two blocks bigger if that makes sense and that would just give us plenty more room on the the inside and generally just make it uh, look a little bit better but yeah this kind of demonstrates how it could work if it was this side assuming that we do do these uh three by three and I might, I might do a test to see how quickly you can win do like imagine if each of these had like a different pattern how quickly you would win three by three i think it would obviously be like way quicker than a game of bingo but like people normally play bingo for like an entire night and they have like almost a hundred numbers or whatever it is and that would be the world's most boring video just like stampy's lovely bingo game for like three hours <laughs> it would be a funny it's like the concept of it is funny but it would be the most boring thing so maybe doing three by three rather than five by five will work better but i think five by five still would be fine just because there's only like 16 different colors so um yeah i think there's a good chance that people would end up winning quite soon but yeah let me just go and show you how this works i press the button and one block should drop down this is where it's not gonna work now there we go i pick one drop down and then i can go and press the, the button again and then another one is gonna drop down from somewhere probably in this direction somewhere uh oh did one not drop down well, I, th I, th I think I might have got like the gap between one then. That must have been like such like a tiny gap. So what I can do to stop that happen or uh, happening or at least reduce it is if I pull this uh, repeater back by a little bit more, it just means that the, the redstone signal will stay lit for just a, a little bit longer, which means that should uh, should never happen. So let's go and press it again. As you can see, that one dropped down there and there'll be another one dropping and another pink one. There we go. Good day for the the, the pink ones, I guess. So uh, yeah, that's uh, the way it would work. Of course, if you get the, the same color again, then I guess you could just ignore it maybe because the way they do it in bingos is they use like columns like it matters not just the number but also like the column i could maybe even add something in those lines maybe like um oh i know what could work is maybe the first like say like the blue one drops maybe like the first blue one drops has to be like the top row but let's say if you had a blue one down here maybe like you can only place it once the third blue one has dropped which kind of makes it more exciting because you would get a lot of the same colors dropping down again and it kind of gives a reason to, to that am i like him making up new rules for bingo that's something that i never expected to have happen something else i thought about which i might not do anymore is here i thought we could have torches which would like break away the blocks. But what I was thinking is every time you press the button, it would get rid of all of the blocks that are already down here and then a new one drops just so you can easily see which one the new one was. 
But if I am doing the version where they stack up, that wouldn't make sense. So it could be pistons that pull back these blocks and underneath there's torches to get rid of them, which could work really well. If not, I could just do like a separate button somewhere where when you press that, it just goes and resets the entire game, which would be, uh, would be handy rather than going and breaking it uh, away by hand in case you want some quick fire rounds uh, of bingo. But yeah, overall, I think I'm pretty happy with this as a, a basic design. So... I think the next thing I'm going to do is try and start deciding what it looks like. Because I don't want to build this entire thing again, but just a few blocks bigger. Uh, even though it will take a bit of time just to work out, because obviously I'm going to have to change the track slightly, just some of the the timing, uh, the timing, because it's quite exact. But yeah, I think I'm going to work out a little bit more what it's going to actually look like and build the the building with those dimensions and then fit the, the redstone in, just so I'm not rebuilding this thing over and over and over again. So yeah, that's going to be the, the next thing for, for me to, to do now. And then yeah, once I've got an idea of kind of what blocks I'm going to use and the, the overall shape of this building, uh, I'll bring you back in and show you what I came up with. I've been doing a bit of playing around with what the design on the outside is going to look like. I think I'm going to do it this size, so it's going to be it's going to be pretty enormous. So uh, I was trying doing a size. So oh yeah, first things first, first things first. So I thought that for the floor, I could do it so you have a four by four area, which basically means everyone's going to have every single color, but they just arrange them a way that they want. I thought there could be a rule that if a color comes out that's already dropped out before, maybe you have to take a block away or something. I want to make sure that people don't like lose of people win at the same time, which I think I guess is relatively unlikely, but it just means if there's any four colors that are in the same way, then that means you could end up winning at the same time. But I mean, there's a pretty small chance that's going to happen. But yeah, this should be roughly about the, the size of the, the floor. I've added it so there's going to be one block like in the middle, which means like the, the door you know, can be in the, the very center. And then the, the button for setting off all of the, the redstone can be central rather than wonky. It doesn't really make any difference, but it always annoys me when it's like two block wide and then the button's on one side. So yep, I think I'm going to do that in that style. And then, oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot when I press the button, it's going to make something happen. Um, yeah, then I, uh, yeah, I designed like this big sign. So generally bingo halls like have some enormous, really colorful sign saying bingo at the, the front. So I thought it'd be cool to, to do that. I thought this shape worked quite well. So I kind of tried it out like this. I don't really like the white that much because it's so colorful. I thought having white or black in the background would work, but it makes it all look quite plain i guess so i think i'm going to try and make it even more colorful so i'm going to have colorful text and a, uh, a colorful uh, background uh, as well but in terms of a general shape i think that works i also don't need it to be so high up so in this one like you're down here and then there's a really high wall up to where the concrete powder is you don't really need that to be fair like the the concrete powder could be dropping just down from here as long as it drops like at least one block it's going to, to be fine so uh that's why like if you imagine I'm inside here, like these walls aren't going to be really, really tall up until where the, the redstone is. So that's going to, uh, yep, yeah, all look uh, pretty nice. So yeah, I'm going to keep working it out. I think I'm going to, as I say, I'm going to change the, the quartz around to, to something else. But I thought I'd kind of show you uh, what it once could have been, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I am going to end up going back to it being like this. But uh, yeah, I think this works pretty well. So once I've uh, built the, the outside of this area then I'm going to be like completely working out what the inside is going to be and the the redstone uh, I think I am going to have the pistons pulling these back uh, and that's going to be completely new redstone that I haven't fit in before but uh, it'd be nice to know kind of what size space I have to, to be able to, to work with so yeah let me go and do that now and I'll bring you back in once I made a bit more progress Right, I've just done a lot, and I mean a lot of experimenting on the, the side. I have rebuilt it, I don't know how many times now. I've been looking up color wheels and playing around, and then I think I come up with a style I like. So anytime I did colors, any combination I did, it still just kind of looked a bit dull. Like, just the fact that you needed to pick colors where they wouldn't blend into each other too much. Like, no matter what I did, like, either the, the background or the, the color, like, the, the text looked too dull. And I was like, okay, well, I could try and light them up. And I was trying to find a way to, like, light blocks through blocks. But it doesn't really seem to be a good way to do it. Unless it's, like, carpets or paintings and stuff. I didn't want to go down that route. So, um, yeah. What I have done is I have put glowstone at the, the back. I've gone for a light blue and then dark blue on the, the outside. Because having all as a single color didn't look that great either. So, I think it makes it look, like, nicer anyway. Just having the, the, the blues. I don't know why I chose blue. It just seemed to, to look quite nice. Uh, and then, yeah, I've then put um, glass pane. So not blocks of glass. At first, I did put blocks of glass, which looks okay. But I think the, the panes just looked way, way, way nicer. If I kind of do a bit of a, a comparison, if I just do a few of the, the big blocks along there like that, uh, you can kind of see the outline. They look a bit brighter. These ones look a bit darker. And also, you kind of get the, the textured effect. You get it like you can see the edges of these blocks, which kind of makes it look more like an actual proper sign. And I think makes it look way nicer. And so, yeah, 
I don't know whether the colors are going to be exactly the same in terms of the way the text is, but apart from that, I think I'm pretty uh, happy with uh, with that. As you can see, like the like if this is where the the blocks are falling down from, it's not going to be crazy crazy tall. So uh, yeah, I just thought I'd show you since I've designed this sign, I'm going to go and uh, build the rest all the way the the outside on each side around here, and then we can kind of start doing the the inside. Uh, we also should have plenty of room for for redstone. I'm kind of building this thing slightly bigger than I necessarily need to to build it. Uh, so um. Yeah, the fact that we've got the glowstone poking out here won't matter. Also, at the, the back section, it's really just kind of going to be a bunch of tracks anyway. So, wouldn't even make a, a big deal uh, if that was the case. So, right then, uh, let me go and build up the, the rest of the, the outside of this area. And then we can kind of go to, to start designing some of the, the inside and kind of fitting it all to, together the way it's going to be. Just a little bit of a, an update. This is kind of the, the progress as it is now. As you can see, I've built up the the, the rest of the, the wall. So it's basically the, the same on pretty much every side, apart from this side. Oh, no, not this side. This side, uh, where I did a bit more of a pattern down here. Uh, I think the, the bottom area might end up changing around here. I'm not entirely sure, but I've added a, a doorway in. And then there's a corridor leading to the... Uh, the entrance of the arena and yeah I've started designing the arena a bit I've stuck with the design I did before with the the half slab so you would put down the carpet here and paste blocks on top of them originally I did quartz half slab then I ended up changing it to these different types of wood just to easily keep track of what side is yours like which like quarter I guess um I mean it should be easy enough to, to keep track anyway if you stand next to it but yeah this way no one's going to get confused and uh, of course using wood's good because I can use half slabs and there's kind of different shades of wood so it's you know very easy to say you know I'm the jungle one or the dark oak one or whatever and then this lip here this isn't the start of the wall I'm gonna have that there and then I think what I'm gonna do is do a wall going behind it so here this is where like the actual main wall is going to, to be leading up where the the concrete is going to be pushed down from um all the way along here like that and then the reason for that is because when the blocks get slid down uh they will end up landing on this raised area which just will make it easier for everyone to, to see them so this will go and drop down like there like that and then behind these blocks here is where we have the the piston so then that would get pulled back then the concrete will fall down and get broken by uh, a torch and then i'll probably have like some sort of hopper collection system down there to to, to collect them all like uh collect, collect them all up sorry like i've done in the the past so that's all seeming fine. I'll probably do the, the blocks where they're going to land a different color or something. I don't know. I guess I don't need to. And then, of course, the, the button uh, that you'll press will be down at the, the very end here. So, yep, still just kind of on the, the, the early stages of working all of this out. But I thought I'd kind of keep you regularly updated. So, yeah, this is your, your update from, uh, from me. Another one coming now. Okay, I've just finished off doing the, the redstone and it's all working. There is one mistake I've made, and I'll get to that in a little bit, but before I have to go and fix my mistake, let me show you how it works. So, yeah, this is the, the new minecart track, very similar to the, the last one, but as you can see, the timing's pretty much perfect, so as one goes down, the, the next one goes up. So that one goes down, that one goes up, so yeah, this is just slightly different, the, the way this track here is uh, is working, but this is pretty much uh, as good as I could get the, the timing. I'm sure I could get it slightly better, but I'm sure this will work like 99% of the time, and that is good enough for me. People always say, Snappy, are you a perfectionist? No, I am not, and here's good proof of that. <laughs> it works pretty much every single time. So yeah, basically what would happen is I'd press the, the button, whichever one the, the concrete powder is on would, uh, would go, oh yeah, oh no, it's, that's not right. So you press the button, First, these blocks get pulled back and would drop the, the concrete powder in. Then that gets pushed forward and then it drops out. And I haven't actually tested the timing on this. So let's uh, uh, just do all the, the same color actually for, for now. So let's go and put these on the, the front of all of these. Um, um, what are they called? These are called pistons. Yeah, let's put this on the, the front of all of these. And let's make sure that the, the timing does work so that uh, they get kind of pulled away before they end up dropping down. So a good way to, to test this is if I then go and uh, put a different color down on these ones, uh, then that way we can see, you know, whether the, the pink ones have gone and then the, the orange ones end up dropping down. Uh, the reason I'm doing on all of them is because I do not know uh, which uh, piston is going to be pushing out, which is, I guess, kind of the, the whole point of the, the entire game. So Right, there we go. So what should happen is the pink ones should all disappear and then one orange one should end up being dropped down. That is going to be what we want to have happen. I press the button and there go the pink ones and... Ah. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh. No. It didn't work. <laughs> okay, let me try just pressing the button and let me just see whether an orange one does drop down. 
because either it dropped down too quick. Oh no, it's just not dropping down at all. Okay, that's okay. The the best way to, to test this out is to, to just push down with a, a lever and see why is it not working. So, ah, oh, do you see that? The redstone got to here and then just stopped. That is weird. Look, the redstone goes and it gets to here and then, oh, there we go. But that time it did go. That is strange. Let's try, um, I don't know what to do. That was weird. I think it's like a weird redstone glitch or something. Let me go and press the button again and let's see whether the redstone spreads everywhere. And uh, no, look. See, the redstone gets to here and then just stops. <laughs> is it because, is this repeater pull back too much or something? Let's do that back like to, to here and let's try it again. That is strange. Okay, it's not my fault in the redstone. It's the redstone being weird. It gets to there and okay. Now it's going, oh, but it didn't make the, oh. Oh, I see. I see as well. So that was a weird glitch, but also... It looks like I, I haven't added repeaters to push it all the way around the outside here either. So let's just go and add a, a bunch of these around the outside. Uh, I'm kind of adding more than I need, but this will make sure it gets its, uh, the entire way around to the outside. And a lot of this redstone is going to, to end up, well, pretty much all of this is going to be uh, changed in a moment. Anyway, I just want to make sure this works before I go and change it again. So right, let's let's give this uh, another go. It doesn't really make a difference between a, a lever or button either with the way the rest of redstone is. But let's see, is that going to go and spread its entire way around? No, it didn't make it all the way down there. Why? Why is the redstone being so weird? It's just not like traveling far enough. Look, it gets to here and then just stops. Let's try like putting this one forward, maybe? Is that in any way affecting it? Oh, uh, well, there we go. Okay, so that seemed to, to work a bit better. I don't know if there's enough repeaters around here. This is such a weird redstone. Oh, there is there is a, <laughs> some concrete powder dropping down, and it may now be working. Yeah, we are getting it dropping down. Why is it landing down here, though? That's the weird thing. Why is the concrete powder landing on front of in front of these blocks? How would it even how would it even reach that fuck? So if it gets slid out, it's gonna just drop straight down here. I am like so confused in like so many different ways. It is unbelievable right now. Ah, these, I think, I think these are getting pulled back and then pushing forward before it's hit the hopper and then they're ending up sliding forward. That is ridiculous. I did not even know that that would be possible to, to happen. That's okay though. I can fix that. Um, that is so weird. Okay, so... There's a few problems, as you can see at the, the moment, but in theory, it's pretty much working. I think it's just some adjusting with the, the repeaters I need to do. The big problem that I made, bigger than all of this, is I forgot what I said about earlier, about my mechanism of, like, sliding the blocks along before they drop down. So these pistons should all be back a little bit, so then I could have, like, the, the trail of, um the the concrete powder up there and then this one here i forgot to do that i'm so annoyed because i basically got to redo all of this again so yeah a little bit of work to do i've just wasted like the last three hours of my life building this and now i'm gonna have to go and probably spend a good few more hours <laughs> fixing it all again but hey this is the sacrifice you need to, to go through in order to, to make progress so yeah i'm gonna go and do all of that God, you're so lucky you don't have to, to do that. People say like, oh, you got the dream job playing Minecraft. They don't think about this stuff. They do not think about this stuff. Anyway, I'm going to go and do all of that. And then I'll check back in uh, with you. And hopefully then it will be working. Okay, I've just done the redstone again. It didn't take me too long, I'll be honest. It took me a little while, but it didn't take me ages. I just like moaning about stuff because I moan. <laughs> right then, uh, it all worked now, which is the, the good thing about doing it again. As you see, I've put in some uh, concrete powder just to, to test it. So basically, all I did is I moved these slightly back and then I played around a little bit with the, the redstone. Don't go into too much detail, but basically the redstone now goes straight down to the, the pistons on this side. Uh, and then we have the repeaters leading up here to, to these ones with a, a slight delay. All seems to be working fine, so you'll see that as I press a button, it will drop down one random color, and the winner is light blue! Then when I press the button, it should get rid of the, the light blue, and then instead drop down a different color. So light blue is gone, and this time we are gonna have purple! And then I can play again. Goodbye purple, and next we have yellow! So there we go, you can see how you could have a game of bingo like this. So. Yeah, it's looking pretty nice that is so far. Of course, um, can you see what's missing? There's something pretty big that's missing. Can you see? There's no roof. So I <laughs> I did actually start building a roof over the area when I started building the walls. And I realized, like, actually, it'd be easier to not have a, uh, a roof yet uh, just because 
um, while I'm building it, it'll be easier to be able to fly up and down and it won't be all dark and stuff. So I left the roof off and I'm really glad I did because another problem, which is something I didn't really think about, is of course resetting the game because uh, them dropping down here into these chests is fine. Like, whatever, we'll just leave the concrete powder down there. If we need to, we can break away the, the hopper. There's just a chest underneath there. So that all, uh, to me, is fine. Uh, I don't need to worry about that. I probably won't even leave access down there. Um, but the, the issue is um, these because... We can have, was it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven high? I think that is, was that, or is that eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe eight, I don't know. So we can have a certain amount of these. Not a huge amount though. Uh, it's it's a, an amount that you could have a couple games and you could run out of a color if it does keep coming up quite a lot. I think that's unlikely, but it could happen. So I kind of want these stacks to go a little bit higher like this. Of course, the problem is that now it goes over the, the level you would assume that the roof was going to be. And at first I thought that was a problem, but then I was like, you know what? What I was probably going to do with the roof is just go and fill it all in like this. And it would be the most boring roof in the world. It would just be a load of concrete powder. Boring. Yo, I'm falling asleep just talking about that idea. But what if I kind of make these a feature? What if I just leave these kind of like exposed, poking out of the, the top? Maybe leave some ladders next to them so you could go and refill them. Maybe have these stacking up and then like a bit going around the, the outside of them like this and then ladders so you can get up and make a feature out of it. Make the, the roof look a little bit more interesting as a result of all of these things poking out of the, the top. I think that's more interesting. It will give us an easy way to reset. You'll also, from the outside, just be able to, to look up and see how much concrete powder is left and see whether you're going to need to, to refill it soon. And I think that kind of solves quite a few problems in just one go. So what I'm going to do now before I do that, I'm going to take a bunch of screenshots of it as it is now because it's always easier to, to do the screenshots uh, before you build the roof. That will make it easier uh, for when I come around to, to building this in my lovely world. So I'm going to make a few finishing touches down here, tidy the place up, make sure I think it's pretty much uh, as it's finally going to, to end up being. Uh, and then I can go and start working on the, the roof. And then, apart from, I guess, the name of the, the, the place, we're going to be not too far off finishing this thing. Okay then, I do think I am pretty much done with designing this thing in terms of how it's going to be in the behind the scenes. I do feel like this is one that might change when I end up building it in my lovely world, but for now, I think I'm pretty happy with it. So yeah, <laughs> the first thing that you'll uh, have noticed is that the, the roof is kind of how I set it about. So I kind of played around with a few different things. I had the idea of doing like glass up the side of these, but like... Like, the reason I'd do that would be to, like, make it look like, you know, it's keeping it in place, even though, obviously, in Minecraft, it's it's not going to blow over in the wind or anything. So I think it's fine like that. And it just, it's just quite interesting having all of the, the different colors poking out of the, the top anyway. Certainly nothing else in my lovely world quite like this. And then, yeah, I added a, a higher square around the top. Um, I then decided to to add some glass in the, the corners and then I ended up just kind of breaking away some of the, the corners here, here and here, which kind of makes this a little bit more of an interesting shape. One block of glass in the middle, which kind of mimics what we have down here, where there's just the, the one block of the light blue down there as well. So that works quite well. And then I already kind of had this column here a bit for where the button is and then where the doorway is. So they kind of both had a bit poking out the, the side. So I decided to, to add the same on this side anyway, just so the, the room is the, the same. And it kind of stops it being like a big square room as well and kind of having these pillars going up the, the side it also made some really nice areas just to put some chests because we're going to need some chests full of um uh carpets just so they can go and place them down in the the area redstone all seems to to be working you know the, the way that it should be even though i filled it all in so there we go one drops down Press the button again, and then the blue one is going to disappear, and then there should be another one. There we go, and a green one drops down. So, yep, that is all working the uh, the way it should be. Uh, let me just go and check that the concrete powder has dropped down from the, the top up here. So you should see, yep, the, the green one has gone down by, by one, and then the blue one has gone down by one here as well. And then, of course, you could climb up the, the ladder like this and go and refill them. And you'll be able to play for ages because you've got this stretch here. This is 10 blocks high. Then, of course, it going all the way down to here and then one across. So you've probably got, like... 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, like 18 blocks that you can go. So obviously that's more than 18 turns because, you know, you're, you're going to be getting all different colors. So basically you are never going to need to reset during a time playing it. And to be honest, like who's going to be playing this for like any long period of time? Like bingo is a very, very boring game. I'm sorry if you like bingo, but it is. Come on, it is. It's, it, I guess it could be fun just for like the social side of it and stuff. But the actual game, it's just sitting there 
there and listening to someone call out numbers. So, yeah, this isn't going to be a place that we're going to be continually going back to to, to play. In terms of the, the name... I'm thinking of calling it Bingo, just like all caps, exclamation mark, like Bingo, I think is just a fine name. It might end up changing, but for now, I think that's the, the way that I like it. So, yep, I think we are certainly close enough to, to being done that I feel confident to, to start building this in my lovely world. I've already taken all of the, the screenshots that I need and all of the, the dimensions I've written them down. So, uh, yep, next thing for, for me to do is to find an exact area in my lovely world to, to build this. I'm assuming it's going to be somewhere around the, the theatre side of town and then start making videos of it. Of course, as you're watching it, I have already made all of those videos building in my lovely world and playing it. So if you want to see me building it there or see us actually playing the game with all of the, the final rules that I'm going to come up with. Oh uh, yeah, links in the description to the episodes of us building and playing this thing. So yep, that's it. This has been my journey designing the, the bingo hall. It's been a, a pretty fun one. And uh, yeah, there should be another behind the scenes coming up soon uh, where it'll probably be me uh, working out one of my new mini games. But for now, I want to thank you all very much for watching and I will see you all later. Bye!